Hey guys, so welcome to part two of my Godot beginners tutorial series where we are going to be building a endless runner game. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can break down our concept uh, of this game into multiple parts to allow us to do a little bit more decoupling and better structured code and a better structured project which is extensible and will allow you to just develop your game a lot faster later on and also to reduce bugs and issues which you might pick up so guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet uh, please do subscribe now and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of these tutorials in this series going forward so as I said in the previous tutorial, uh, we are going to be doing this unscripted and basically I've created this project already, but it has a lot of flaws in terms of how it's been built and how it's uh, been structured. It's not very extensible at this point, but what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this current project or this view that you see on screen now and we're going to start by building it from scratch in a very different way and a very different approach as to conventional ways of development. So to start off, let's uh, just open up a new Godot project. So I'm going to right click over here and just open a new Godot window and then I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this Godot Beginner Tutorial. endless runner and I'm going to create a folder and create an edit. So just to quickly go back to our scene or before we do that let's just click on 2D over here and let's look at our current game. So there are a few elements here so one is this score UI, there's this barrel which will damage our player, there's this bone which will give our player a score and uh, these can be seen as pickups and these can be seen as items which give damage or obstacles. So what we're going to do is we're going to create them individually and then we're going to decouple some of their common functionality into different scenes and then bring that into these various items. So if you had to, for say, uh, for instance, have to create another item, which is maybe like a bullet which shoots at the player, then you could go and create that and then just have it as a obstacle or a damageable type object. And it will then be able to inherit uh, the behavior of this object to actually kill the player as well. So you'll see how that works as we go along in this tutorial series. But that is the idea of what we're going to be doing. So we've now basically got an idea of the analysis of this. So we are going to need a scene for the score. We're going to need a scene for a player, a scene for a barrel, a scene for a bone. As this floor is going to be scrolling, so we need a scrollable background. We need a stationary background as well. So we need something which we can extend just in case one day we want to turn this into a parallax effect, then we must be able to easily start turning this background into a scrollable background as well. So we're going to look at how we can do all those things in our new project. So let's uh, quickly look at what we're going to do. So in terms of uh, just using what you need, that principle that we spoke about in the first uh, tutorial is what we're going to do is we're just going to build out the basic objects we're not going to select the appropriate nodes yet. We're just going to get our objects out so that we know what objects we're going to be working with. And then from there, we're going to iterate through our project. Uh, as we need things, we will modify the nodes, we'll change them and go through the development process in, in that manner. So let's start off with the very first thing we need is a game node so i'm going to start off with a 2d scene rename this to game and we are going to save this so what we want to do is we just want to create a folder where we can put all, all our scenes so let's create this folder called scenes and since this is the game node and the main node of our game we're going to keep it in the root directory of scenes 
Then the next thing we identified from our other game is we need a player. So let's create another scene and make this a 2D scene and rename it to player. And we can save that off. And in here we can create a folder called player. Let's just say players. Let's say for instance, we wanted to make this a selectable character. We want to change it uh, on our start menu and then we can interchange different players which we have stored in this folder. So let's just save this as player.tscn. Next, we need a barrel. So rename this to barrel. Save that off. We want to go up one folder. We want to create a folder and we want to call this obstacle. Let's just call it obstacles because we could have multiple. So obstacles, barrel. And then the next thing is we want a bone. So let's create a 2D scene, rename it to bone and save this off. And we're going to go up another folder, create a folder, and we're going to call this items and save that off. So now the other thing we want is we need a game over UI and a score UI. So first let's just create a normal 2D scene. So you'll notice we're not uh, using any UI elements yet only just normal no 2ds to get our structure built out so we're going to call this score ui and we're going to save this in a folder called ui so let's create a ui folder and save it off over here next game over ui so we'll name this game over ui and we'll save it off under ui again and there we go. Right, so things we need to think about now, which we can foresee is that this barrel will do damage to our player and this bone will be a collectible item. So what I'll do is I'm going to go create two other little abstractions or decoupled instances or scenes, which will then give properties to these two scenes. So let's create one called pickup so it'll be a pickup scene save that off and let's uh, just go up one folder and I'm going to call this effectors for now this might not be the right term but that's fine this is why we are taking this approach it's just to get that initial architecture and then from there we can iterate through our project and just go and set all these things up. So for now, we're going to call it pickup because it's going to allow us to pick up a bone. And then the next one we'll just call uh, effect damage. And we will save that under effectors as well. So that's going to then allow us to effect damage on the player when it inherits from this scene. So let's just go back again and just uh, look at what else we are missing. So we are missing backgrounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a generic scene which is going to hold scrollable backgrounds for us. So to start off, let's uh, just create another scene, 2D scene again. We'll go and modify this when we get there. Scroll. Let's call it scrolling background and save that off. So what we're going to do here is just go up another folder and let's just create, actually, I think we can do this as an effector as well, because what we are planning on doing is we'll create multiple backgrounds and this scrolling background will affect the background that we've selected. So for now, let's put this in effectors. But let's uh, just create a subfolder called backgrounds. So I'm going to save it in here and then we have that scene as well. So let's just to clean up this project now, get rid of this icon.png, we don't need it. And the next thing we want to do is start creating some scripts. So for the scripts, I'm just going to right click over here, create a new folder and call, call it scripts. And where we know we will definitely need scripts is player. So let's add one. And we're going to put that into our scripts folder here and create that. 
save that off. Barrel, we definitely know we will have a script. We'll save that off into the scripts folder. Okay, save that, save it. And in the bone as well. Up here. And into scripts, open and create and save. So the thing about this is we are creating these scripts now, but the approach that we are taking in terms of the solid principle and the dry principle, we're going to have this initial architecture and then we're going to come back and reiterate through our project and then go decouple even further if need be. So we will be refactoring as we go along as well. So this isn't the, well, the end basically architecture that we're going to have. We are going to be coming back and changing things so I just wanted to show you what approach we will be taking just to get off the ground, just to get our initial idea and our concept in place. Score UI, we're not even sure if we're going to be using a script yet, so therefore I'm not going to add any scripts. We only, remember, we only add things as we need them, but in the beginning we do build a basic architecture to, to just get an idea of the elements of the game. Game over, we don't know. Pick up, we are also not sure, but there is definitely going to be an element where something needs to be executed via a signal. So for now, I'm going to leave this out. Not going to do anything. Our scrolling background, we know for certain we'll need a script. So I'm going to attach a script over here and let's just put it in the right folder. So into scripts and create scrolling background.gd and create it and save it so guys that's basically the basics of our project we need to bring in assets as well now so let's just create a new folder over here and call it assets and then we want to have a few types of assets so one is going to be audio so this might get broken down even further later on, depending on what audio we bring into our game. But for now, a basic folder audio is fine. And then another folder called Sprite. And then finally, another folder called Backgrounds. So now I've got a, I've got a few assets which I've created uh, for this game already. So I'm going to quickly bring those in to our scene over here. So I'm going to just open this file manager and open this file manager. So you can right click on this res and then go to open in file manager. So I'm going to move some of these images into the right places. So it's going to be, let me just show you what I'm copying here. So it's going to be this background is going into assets, backgrounds, paste that in there the barrel is going to go into sprites and maybe inside that we can create another folder called obstacles like so. so I'm gonna copy that and paste it into obstacles and then we're going to create a new folder here as well called items and inside of items we can copy this bone image and then let's create a new folder called player and here we've got a few frames so I'm going to just select these and I think dog5 we also need so we'll just paste that in there and then finally we've got this scroller which is part of our foreground so we'll go into backgrounds over here and let's just copy that out and paste that in so you'll see that's our floor so let's maybe rename this to foreground actually let's call this ground so that's what it is and then basically that's all the assets that are going to be required in our scenes right so i'm going to close this out and you'll see that Godot has now imported them and we can actually now view them inside of here. So the only other thing I haven't now copied over is the sound. So actually I need to open that file manager again. 
I've now forgotten to do that. So let's just look at uh, assets and audio and then in this other folder sounds I have death, jump and reward. So this is when the bone gets picked up, this is when we jump and this is when the player dies or crashes into a barrel. So I'm going to copy that and just paste it as well. So now we have all of the assets that we need in our project. So guys, uh, that's where I'm going to end this uh, first or the second part of this Godot beginner tutorial series. In the next one, we're going to start by building out some of these objects and we're going to use the minimal nodes and functionality that's required just to get the basics going. And then we'll take an iterative approach of just building them up and then eventually getting to our final game. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And please hit a like or leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.